Well, good morning and welcome to the live stream services of the Ambassador Baptist Church this Memorial Day weekend. Uh, while we wait for a few folks to get connected to our service this morning, I give you a couple of updates. Uh, we had asked a while back for folks to pray uh, for our neighbor across the way, uh, Annie and her husband Donnie. Donnie had to have a leg amputated because of difficulties from diabetes. Uh, he has had that done in rehab and is now home and doing well. And she asked me to thank everyone uh, for your prayers for him and to continue to pray for him as he uh, heals and gets back to life as possible, normal as possible. Also, uh, Brother Larry Hendricks, one of our folks uh, that has been gone through radiation treatments for the last 30 days, has completed uh, those treatments. And the doctor says the next two weeks will be the hardest as the radiation in his body uh, builds up and then tries to leave. So please uh, continue to pray for him as well, that he will recover and that this will take care of uh, the problems that he has been having. And so this morning we're going to be looking in Deuteronomy chapter number eight uh, as we look at this Memorial Day weekend. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter number eight, verses 11 through 20. Uh, the thought or the title of the message is beware that thou f forget not the Lord uh, thy God. Uh, this Memorial Day weekend is an important holiday. Uh, it's not important just because people get off work. Uh, it's not important uh, so that families can come together with friends and have barbecues. Uh, it is important because of what it is all about. Uh, this year, it will be a whole new kind of Memorial Day thanks to the uh, coronavirus pandemic. But Memorial Day began after the Civil War as a day to recognize the fallen soldiers who died fighting for what they believed in. Uh, it was originally called Decoration Day as family members would go and decorate the graves of their fallen soldiers uh, with flowers and flags and ribbons. Uh, today they still go through and place flags by each of the tombstones. Uh, it did not become uh, an official holiday until 1967. And so it's important that we don't forget those who have given their lives in the service to their country. Uh, some of the totals that we look at in the American Revolution, we lost around 8,000 men. Uh, the Civil War, over 490,000 died. World War I, 53,402. World War II, 291,557. The Korean War, 30,880. Uh, Vietnam War, 58,000. And in the wars and conflicts since Vietnam, we've lost around 10,000 soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marine. That's nearly 942,000 lives that have been given and sacrificed so that you and I can have the freedom that we enjoy in this country today. And so we have Memorial Day to remind us of all those lives that are lost. Many of you, I'm sure, have uh, family members and friends who fought, who have lost their lives, so that we can live today in peace and harmony and enjoy uh, freedom that we enjoy in America. Uh, each one of these men and women uh, wanted to live their lives just as badly as you and I want to. Uh, they probably wanted to raise families, live in a nice home with kids and a dog. They had dreams and plans, uh, hopes for their future. So we need to remember them and honor them. And that's why Memorial Day was created. It helps us to remember the high cost of freedom, the high cost of fighting for freedom. But unfortunately, a lot of folks don't remember, even though we have this holiday. Uh, too many, uh, it's not about the lives lost. It's about getting a day off work or backyard barbecues. The purpose of the holiday seems to be forgotten. But I guess that shouldn't be surprising because a lot of people forget about Jesus as well. And he's the one who made the ultimate sacrifice uh, by dying for our sins. So this Memorial Day weekend in our country, we have a different focus. We are focused on trying to stay alive and survive the coronavirus pandemic. We are focused on deaths from the virus. Uh, in Texas alone, there's a million and a half, over a million and a half cases, nearly 93,000 deaths. With mandates and executive orders in place, 
Many are not getting a day off work this year. Many of them have lost their jobs. Many are not having backyard barbecues or family gatherings out of the fear that they could get the virus. So this Memorial Day, many will forget what this holiday is all about because of what's happening in the world today. But I want you to take your Bibles and open them up to Deuteronomy chapter 8. I'm going to read to you a passage that talks about what happens when we forget. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8 verses 11 through 20 says, Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I have commanded thee this day, lest when thou hast eaten and art full, hast built goodly houses and dwelt therein, and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied, then thy heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, who led thee through the great and terrible wilderness, wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought, where there was no water, who brought thee forth water out of the rock of Flint, who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee, and that he might prove thee to, thee, uh, to do good uh, to thy latter end. And thou say in thy heart, My power and the might of my hand hath gotten me this wealth. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he sware unto thy fathers as it is this day. And it shall be, if thou do at all, uh, forget the Lord thy God, and walk after other gods, and serve them, and worship them, I testify against you this day, that ye shall surely perish. As the nations which the Lord destroyeth before your face, so shall ye perish, because ye would not be obedient unto the voice of the Lord your God. I think that one of the biggest problems the modern church faces today is that we forgot. We forgot uh, that God is God. We forgot that he is sovereign, that he is almighty, and that he is in control. We forgot that Lord Jesus, uh, that Jesus is Lord, and that he alone is the way, the truth, and the life. He alone is the only way to the Father and to heaven. Uh, we forget that God's word is authoritative, and that it's through his word that God saves us, that he changes us, that he sanctifies us, that he matures us and transforms us. Uh, I want to share a quote with you from the late theologian R.C. Sproul. Uh, listen carefully. The majority of Americans claim to be Christian. The, uh, only a small percentage claim to be actual atheists. But the truth is, many within the church are functional atheists. In other words, they would never say that they do not believe in God, but they live their lives like there is no God. Truly, they profess Christ with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. And so this term functional atheism is the act uh, of, of, of believing or acting that God doesn't exist. Uh, the Bible says in Psalms 139, 23, and 24, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. And so I want you to think uh, about this for a second. Atheists do not pray, and neither do functional atheists. Even though they say there's a God, they don't pray. Uh, their behavior doesn't line up with their profession. Atheists don't believe in the authority of God's word, and neither do functional atheists. Uh, they might say they believe it's God's word, but it doesn't rule their lives. They don't obey it. They don't let it lead, guide, and direct them. Uh, atheists don't believe in laying up treasures in heaven, and neither do functional atheists. They're too busy seeking all their treasures here on earth. Uh, atheists only live for themselves and live for today. And functional atheists, unfortunately, are no different. Now, here's the difference. Atheists believe that there is no God. Functional atheists say they believe in God, but their lives uh, that they live don't really show that. It shows that they really don't. And so basically, the functional atheist is trying to hedge his bets just in case. He's become aware of the possibility that there is a God, and he's aware of the possibility that God is real, and so he's trying to play the odds and cover all his bases. 
So ask yourself these questions. In what areas of my life do I know I'm not yielding total control to God? To what extent, if I think about it in an intentional way, can I identify areas of my life that I thought were in God's control, but where I can see moments that I seek to take back that control? And so the problem is it doesn't work that way. Jesus doesn't give us the option of riding the fence. Uh, many Christians today, they're neither hot nor cold. They're lukewarm. They're riding the fence. But listen to what God says about that. Matthew 12, 30, He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. How about Revelation 3, 16, as I just said a moment ago? So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. In Matthew 6, 24, God makes it very clear. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. And so all through the New Testament, God makes this distinction. He separates the sheep and the goats. He separates the wheat and the chaff. He says, this is my body, this is my church, and this over here, it isn't. Uh, so basically, the functional atheist is someone who has forgotten God. Uh, now, what does it mean to forget something or to forget someone? I, I think herein lies the problem with our churches today. Uh, we say we believe in God. We say uh, that we love God. But our life does not show that. And God knows that. And God sees that because God knows our heart. Uh, but basically, it means uh, when we forget something that we have forgotten that thought, that thing, or that person. Uh, it's not, uh, no longer in our thoughts. It's no longer on our mind. Uh, it happens when other things in our thoughts and our mind take over. Uh, other things that uh, come to the forefront uh, that become more important to us. And so we set our mind and our thoughts and our desires on those things and we disregard the other things and the other persons. And that's what functional atheists do. Uh, Monday through Saturday, their thought on God, it never crosses their mind. They go through their weeks doing their thing, uh, living their lives, and then all of a sudden the thoughts of living for Christ and learning about Christ and, and loving Christ, it's nowhere to be found uh, in their day-to-day uh, -day life. And then all of a sudden, one day a week, uh, they think about Christ and they come to church and they worship him and their hearts are on him on that one day of the week. But the rest of the week, their hearts are far from him. Now, jump forward uh, to today and to the coronavirus pandemic uh, that now steals our focus 24-7. Now, we can't even meet on the Lord's Day together. Now, we're out of the habit of regularly attending uh, the worship services for the Lord. Other things uh, have taken away our focus, and, and we're not focused on the Lord anymore. Uh, and, oh, yeah, we join in on the live stream services, but even those numbers have fallen as we uh, go about our daily lives wondering what's next. And so, church, here's the thing. Uh, there is something we all have to be watchful of. You and me and every other Christian out there, we have to be careful. Uh, let's go back now to Deuteronomy 8 and look at verse 11 again. God says this to his people. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God. In other words, be careful that this doesn't happen to you. Uh, take precautions uh, that you're not going to forget God. You're not going to forget his word. You're not going to forget what it means to love God and to serve God. And that's what this says. Uh, but look at the last part of that verse. God says, which I command thee this day. So here's how we do that. We keep his commandments and his judgments and his statutes. Uh, how do we forget God? That's a good question. Let me give you uh, an answer from the scriptures. Uh, that we're looking at today. Number one, we uh, forget God not by keeping his commandments, uh, his judgments, and his statutes. Uh, Jesus said in John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. In verse 21, he says, he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. He goes on to say in the verses that we're looking at today in Deuteronomy 8, verses 12 through 14, 
lest when thou hast eaten and art full, and hast built goodly houses and dwelt therein, and then when thy herds and flock uh, multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied, then thy heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God. And so when that happens, you're not going to be going to him every morning asking uh, for your daily bread. When you step out and do your thing, and, and, and all the blessings come to you, and you begin to pat yourself on the back, uh, then you're not going to be going to God asking for your daily bread. You're going to believe lies like that guy in Houston tells us that uh, the best of life is now. Well, that's not true. Uh, what happens is that a person becomes content with the poor substitutes that this world offers and their focus shifts. Now, we have an enemy that goes about like a roaring lion. And he would love to do nothing more than to, like he did with Eve, put that thing in front of you that would take your focus off the Lord Jesus Christ and put it on the things of this world. And so instead of their goal being going out and making disciples, their goal is uh, to maintain comfort and safety. Instead of a goal being to see more disciples made, uh, their goal is maintaining what they've got. And the church has done that. Uh, we've gotten comfortable. Uh, we have settled in and not uh, put Lord first in our life and not striving to do what he's called us to do. Instead of our goal being to strive together living for Christ, we now live for ourselves and how we can please ourselves. So now because the church has lost its focus, perhaps maybe God has taken away all the junk that we were focused on uh, to try and get our attention, that we need to get back to focusing on the main thing. And that's focusing on the Lord Jesus Christ, being obedient to his command, because as I said, if we love him, uh, we will keep his commandments. You see, here's the thing. All of us as fallen human beings are born with atheistic hearts. Uh, Romans 3.11 says, There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. So we weren't looking for God. Uh, we didn't care about God. So we kind of had that atheistic heart. Verse 18 says, there is no fear of God before their eyes. Today, we don't have a fear of God. Or we don't have a reverence for God. If we did, uh, we would be obedient to his word. We would do the things that he has commanded us to do. And so we are born with a tendency to forget God. But if you look back at our text and you look at what uh, the Lord had Moses write in verses 14 through 16, uh, you'll notice that he reminds them of what he has done for them. Uh, verses 14 through 16. Then thine heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God. Listen to what he's done. Which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. So he set them free from bondage. He led them through the great and terrible wilderness, wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought, where there was no water. He brought, the, uh, he brought thee water out of the rock of the flint. He fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee, and that he might prove thee to do these good, uh, to do thee good at thy latter end. And so, what has God done? God has blessed them; uh, He has provided for them. That brings us to the second way that God helps us to not forget. First of all, He told us to keep His commandments. Secondly, we need to remind ourselves of what God has done in our lives. Uh, you know, one of the best ways that you can talk to someone about God and even share the gospel with them is by sharing your testimony, uh, by telling them what God has done in your life. Uh, even during a stay-in-place pandemic, we can share our testimony with others. We can do it by letter. We can do it by text. Uh, we can do it by social media. There's all kinds of ways uh, we can uh, serve God and, and share. It doesn't have to be a whole lot of Theological, theological jargon. Uh, it's simply as easy as saying, this is what God has done for me. Uh, you could say, I was blind, now I see. I was an alcoholic, but now I'm free. I was an angry, violent person, but now I have love and peace in my heart. I was promiscuous, but now I'm faithful. I was an idolater, but now I love Jesus. Or you could say, I once was lost, but now I'm found. And so we have a way to be able to uh, live for the Lord and not to forget him and to be obedient to him and to share him with others. What has God done for you? Well, let's see. He has forgiven your sin. Uh, he has delivered you. Uh, he's changed your life. 
He sets you free from sin. Uh, we need to remind ourselves of these things. And then we need to share these things with others so that they can see what God is and what He has done. And uh, we can remind ourselves that God loves us and that He's there for us. So the Lord's telling us that the way that we don't forget about God is we keep His commandments. And we continually remind ourselves of what He's done in our lives and what He's done in history. Uh, but thirdly, I want you to notice uh, He wants us to remember who is Lord. In verse 17, he gives us another warning. He says, and thou say in thine heart. So it doesn't even have to be words from our mouth. You can say this in your heart. Uh, verse 17, and thou say in thy heart, my power and the might of mine hand have gotten me this wealth. Now, that's simply the sin of pride. That's the sin of saying, I don't need God. I can do it on my own. I can make it on my own. And again, most people would probably never verbally say that, but they can say that in their heart, and our lives uh, goes on display of what is in our heart. And so when you uh, take it on that you uh, are Lord of your life, that you're on the throne, uh, that you have got all this that you've got uh, because of you, then you better beware because you've forgotten the Lord, you've forgotten what he's done for you, and you've forgotten uh, who is in charge. And when we do that, uh, we are in a mess of trouble. Uh, did you know that in the New Testament, when it talks about Jesus, it refers to him 24 times as Savior, but it refers to him over 600 times as Lord. And so functional atheism comes from putting yourself on the throne. Uh, you are not Lord today. Jesus is Lord. That means that he's our master. Uh, he's the one who is to have control of us. Uh, he is the ruler. He is the boss. He owns us. Uh, he bought us with a price. Uh, he purchased us through the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. And here's what Jesus says to us. Matthew 16, 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciple, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And so today, the third point is who is Lord? We need to deny ourselves. We are not in control of ourselves. Now, many people are, and when they live their lives that way, it's as if they have forgotten God and they're trying to run their own life and be in control. God said that we need to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow him. You say, well, pastor, how can I do that? Well, Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And so the first thing we need to do is we need to present our bodies a living sacrifice. Uh, and we don't need to be conformed to this world. We don't need to take on all the goodies and all the things of this world. We need to transform. And we do that by the renewing of our mind. We need to get it in our mind and in our hearts that we are not the Lord of our life, that the Lord is the Lord of our life. He should be on the throne of our heart. He uh, should be uh, controlling us. The way that we do that, the way that we transform our mind is by getting into the Word of God and by reading it and by obeying it. And if we love the Lord, he says we will obey his commandments. Then, when we do that, then we can prove uh, what it is that God would have us to do. The cross serves one purpose. That purpose was death. Uh, Jesus is saying that you and I have to die to sin. We have to die to self. Uh, take ourselves off the throne and acknowledge that he is Lord. The, the main problem with us is that we try to run everything ourselves, and it's not going to work. God has to run your life. God has to be in control. God said uh, he would have no other gods before him. And so our money and our cars and, and all the different things that we have made gods and placed uh, above God, uh, those are idols that we need to confess and forsake and die to. And we need to again acknowledge that Jesus is Lord. Now, church, the purpose of Memorial Day is so that we don't forget what it costs for you and I to be free. Uh, it's different than the 4th of July. On Independence Day, we celebrate our freedom. But on Memorial Day, we remember what our freedom costs. But don't think 
that taking one day out of the year is enough to adequately re adequately remember. It's not enough. One day out of the year is not enough for anything. Uh, ask yourself this. If you eat one day out of the year, you'll die. If you work your job one day out of the year, you'll be homeless and have nothing. If you mow your yard one day out of the year, it's going to be an overgrown mess. Uh, heaven forbid if you bathe one day out of the year, you will be one nasty, stinky dude. And so we know one day is not enough. We have to continually remember. We have to remind ourselves. We have to diligently maintain what we have. This nation that we live in is the greatest nation on earth, but it's not what it used to be. Uh, it has done everything it possibly can to forget and to remove God from its existence. It has forgotten God. The coronavirus pandemic has changed this nation and this world. It could very well be that God is sick and tired of being forgotten, that he is letting the world know that he is still in control. Uh, it will never return to what it was before the virus hit. But what's really interesting is that if our nation is going to try to get back to what it once was, it's not about taking up arms. It's not about voting the right kind of people in in November. It's not about legislation or politics, Democrats or Republicans. It's about what our text says. It's about remembering God. It's about remembering Jesus Christ. It's about following him and obeying him and living for him. It's about bringing God back to America again. It's about getting our priorities right and doing it God's way. God tells us in the very last verse of our text, and it shall be, if thou do it all, forget the Lord thy God and walk after other gods and serve them and worship them. I testify against you this day that ye shall surely perish. Now, America has walked after other gods, served other gods, worshipped other gods, uh, money and fame and fortune and entertainment, and forgotten the one true God. So this morning, let's ask ourselves, do we live our lives as if there is no God? Are we serving the Lord Jesus Christ, or are we serving ourselves? Who is seated on the throne of our hearts, the Lord Jesus Christ or the flesh? Are we functional atheists or are we following Jesus Christ the Lord? Uh, when we sing the hymn, I surrender all, do we really mean it? Do we surrender everything uh, to him? Now, maybe you're listening this morning and you're saying to yourself, Pastor Adams, if I'm being honest, I have to say that there are things in my life that I haven't surrendered to the Lordship of Christ. We are all that way. Uh, this pandemic and not being in services and being at home and trying to understand what it is that God is, is teaching us uh, ought to open our eyes and we ought to look at our lives and see if Christ is Lord of all. And if I'm being honest, I'm scared to do that. Uh, what if Jesus tells me to do something that's hard? Uh, what if he tells me to give up something that I really like? Uh, what if he calls me to do something that takes me out of my comfort zone? And these are all honest questions. And if you're asking them, you might want to look again at verse 12 and 13 of our text, where he said, Lest when thou hast eaten and are full, and hast built goodly houses and dwelt therein, and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied. And so God has blessed us as a nation. God has blessed us as Christians. God has blessed us as a church. And we have all these great things. So let me ask you this. What if God sent a pandemic to completely take away everything we've relied on and placed ahead of him in our lives? Because truthfully, we have forgotten God. If he's not Lord of all, then he's not Lord at all. Uh, John 3, uh, 3 John uh, chapter 1, verse 4, he says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. And so I would encourage you today that our God is good. Uh, he is a loving Father. And it is so much better to know Him and to walk with Him and to be in fellowship with Him than it is to be comfortable in this world and conformed to this world. Remember what 1 Timothy 6, 7 says? For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry 
nothing out. So it is so much better to be in his presence and in his will than to have anything that this world has to offer. Because this world is temporary. This world is passing away. But eternity is forever. So child of God, have you forgotten God today? Are you serving other gods? Is there anything in your life today more important to you than God? Then you need to come to him today and repent and put the Lord back on the throne of your life. You need to get back that if you really love him to being obedient to his commandments and, and to seek God first and to let him be in charge of your life. Perhaps you're watching today and you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Then today you need to come before the Lord by faith and admit that you are a sinner. Repent of your sin and ask Jesus to forgive you your sin and to come into your life and save you. And then once you've done that, you need to make him Lord of your life. Uh, I honestly believe today uh, in my heart that perhaps God has allowed uh, all this that's going on with this pandemic to get us to wake up to get us to see that we haven't really been serving God and living for God and allowing God to be Lord in our life. What we've really been done is we've been playing church. Uh, we've been faking it. Uh, we've been sort of atheistic in our beliefs and our living. And our lives are showing that. Uh, we're not turning the world upside down for Christ with the gospel like the 12 disciples did back in Jesus' day. Uh, we're not preaching and reading our Bibles and doing and living for God like we should. If we were, uh, things would be different in this world. People would be getting saved. Lives would be changed. Uh, the church would be growing. Our lives would be different. And so perhaps God has allowed this thing uh, with this coronavirus pandemic to take place uh, to get us uh, a home alone where we can be with God, where we can get into his word and read it and study it and meditate on it and begin to get back to putting God uh, first in our life, begin to get back to loving him and obeying his commandments. Uh, because I believe perhaps we have forgotten the Lord and that's why we're in the mess that we are in today. And so I hope and trust today that you will examine your life and look and see uh, if you have forgotten God. Look and see if perhaps God has blessed you, uh, but you think that it's all because of what you've done and, and what you've accomplished, because it's not. We need to understand that God is still in control, and at the snap of a finger, he could take your life today and take you on to heaven and, and just put you out of this world. So I pray that you will look at your life today and search and see, uh, do you love him? Are you keeping his commandments? Is he Lord of your life today? If not, then we need to come to him and repent and ask him to forgive us and cleanse us and put him back where he belongs on the throne of our heart. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the words that we've seen today. I pray that you will help us to search our hearts and our minds. Help us to focus on making sure that you are the Lord of our life making sure that we're not conformed to this world, uh, but that we are totally sold out and sacrificed uh, to you, Lord, uh, that we offer ourselves, that we will make you the King of kings and the Lord of lords of our lives, and that uh, we'll put all those other idols and all those other gods uh, behind us and repent of them and turn from them. And then, Father, I pray today, if there's one watching this or listening today that does not know you as their Savior, I pray that through this message, they'll come to understand their need of you as a Savior, that they'll come by faith, repent of their sins, and call on you to come in and forgive them and to save their souls. And we ask it all in Christ's name. Amen. Well, thank you for being with us this morning in our uh, live stream service. We will back, be back this evening at 5 o'clock. We continue to study the life of Joseph and, and how to handle a crisis. And then shortly this will be uploaded on our Facebook channel so that those who you know that do not have Facebook can go and watch the message there. You can also share this message on your Facebook page uh, so that others might be able to watch it and that they might be able to learn uh, about the Lord Jesus Christ and how that we can live in this day that we are in today. May God bless you and have a great day.